Good afternoon, everyone. Mrs. Horak and I are going to, going to spend the next few minutes breaking down our new and improved virtual learning plan with all of you. Uh, with cases on the ride locally and throughout the state, we need to be prepared to pivot from in-person to virtual learning at any time. I would like to direct you to our district's reopening plan website, which contains all of the details we are going to review with you now. And just in a few moments, I'll actually take you there and uh, uh, help you remember how to get there. I wanna make it clear that we are still in our hybrid model in which some students are attending in person and some students are attending virtually. We want to maintain this as long as possible and we will only make changes if we are forced to do so to ensure the highest levels of health and safety of our faculty, staff, and students. Again, there is no immediate intention to transition from our hybrid model to the virtual model. Before we talk about the virtual learning program, I would like to describe for, for you some of the possible scenarios we are considering should we need to decrease our in-person population. The first scenario is called a partial in-person shutdown. In this scenario, our students in grades seven through 12 will learn 100% virtually at home, while our elementary students, our students in grades pre-K through six, still report for in-person learning. Our special education students in grades 7 through 12 may also attend in-person learning, but this will be determined by the special education teachers collaborating with those students' parents. The second scenario is a full shutdown of in-person learning for all students pre-K through grade 12 and a transition to virtual learning for all learners. We are working diligently to avoid this, but recognize that it still remains a possibility. And that is precisely why we are taking some time to walk through our virtual plan today. I know it may seem confusing at times and the uncertainty is so frustrating, but like we have done for the last eight and a half months, we need to persevere. The, step, the first step in persevering through these challenging times is through preparation. So let's take some time right now and walk you through the, um, the virtual learning plan. So I'm going to share my screen and take you right to that website right now. Just give me a moment to get there because I've got a lot going on on my computer. Okay. Mrs. Horak, do you see it up there? Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay, so uh, this is our Sackets Harbor Central School Reopening Information Center. This can be accessed directly from our school website, www.sacketspatriots.org. This, this is the launching page. So this is the welcome page. And if you look at the top, we have all of the different topics related to our reopening plan. For our virtual learning plan, please refer to the section on the top, which is labeled virtual learning. You click on it and you will be brought to the section which describe, which contains all of the information that uh, the Sackets Harbor faculty and staff have compiled so far on this particular topic. Um, Mrs. Horak and I are actually going to break down each section for you right now. I'm going to start uh, listing for you the differences from the spring of 2020. We recognize that the spring was not ideal. We, uh, I think we did the best job we could given the circumstances, but we all recognize that we could do a better job. And now that we've had time to prepare and plan, uh, we are in a better place. We're still not in the, the most ideal place. I and mean, we're still lacking some of the needed technology in order to implement the best possible virtual learning plan, but we are in a better position now than we were in March of 2020. So let's talk about those differences right now. So. As we move forward, parents and students should expect that daily student-teacher interaction will be required. Each classroom teacher and homeroom teacher will ensure that substantive interaction occurs each day school is in session. There will be increased live sessions with Sackets Harbor teachers. Back in the spring, um, the teachers may be connected once or twice a week, um, maybe once a day. This, this, this go around is going to be much more than it was this past spring. And daily attendance or engagement will be documented and will be required from all students of school age. And we'll be recording this every day in homeroom or in the first period. And it will be recorded in school tools, which is our management system. Uh, the classroom or homeroom teachers will oversee each of their assigned students' virtual learning plan in progress, um, which, which essentially means that the, the, the teachers will be um, it, making sure that every student uh, is on target. And if they are not on target, they will be reaching out to the parents and 
uh, and or to uh, Mrs. Horak, Mr. Castor, or me for assistance to ensure that students stay on track. The teachers in grades K-4 will use Seesaw as their primary virtual learning platform and WebEx or Google Meet for their live connections with students. And we, um, we are currently working and have been working with students for, for quite some time on teaching them how to connect in these, um, on these platforms, uh, uh, Google Meet or WebEx. In grades five through 12, uh, Google Classroom is the primary virtual learning platform, really the only virtual learning platform, really. And uh, WebEx or Google Meet will be used for their live connections as well. In our grades, uh, 5 through 12 students have really been using these platforms since uh, early September. Elementary students, it's been a little bit uh, slower coming, but they're still working on it to ensure that we are ready in the event that we have to shut down for a short period of time or a longer period of time. Uh, the district will adhere to normal grading processes under the virtual learning plan, and every teacher should uh, describe his or her grading uh, practices to parents and guardians. And um, this is this is so important. This is one of the aspects that we felt that that we that we may have lost a little bit in the spring is we need to prioritize community building even in the virtual setting. And uh, I assure you that that will be one of our primary focal points as we move forward if we have to shut down for any period of time. I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Horak right now, and she's going to break down the um, plan for pre-K through grade two, three through five, six through eight, and nine through 12. All right. Thank you, Ms. Gaffney. So um, for our early childhood students, our students that are in pre-kindergarten through second grade, all students will participate in four days of virtual live instruction with their teacher. And then those Wednesdays um, that have been mainly primarily paper-based for our students in pre-K through second grade at this time, um, they um, may still contain some components of paper-based activities, or they may utilize Seesaw or that Google Classroom. Um, the weekly schedule for students may or will include um, daily live social-emotional learning lessons, daily teacher-led live small or whole group sessions, pre-recorded teacher sessions, related service sessions, which may be live or pre-recorded if if your child um, engages in those services and you can expect to receive a virtual learning schedule link. So what does that mean for you as a parent? So basically what that means is um, our school day as a whole has not changed. So at the elementary level, their school day is still eight to two o'clock in the afternoon. This is when students will be expected to log on and interact with their teachers and their peers. That may mean that they're on for um, a period of time with their whole class. It may mean that they're on for a period of time with smaller groups, um, but that will be continuing throughout the day. That virtual learning schedule link will give you all the information about your child's schedule at the beginning of the week. Those will be posted to you um, Sunday evening or by 8 a.m. on Monday morning. So you can expect to have the schedule and know when your kids are required to be on. Um, Outside of the time that they will spend engaging um, in live interaction with their teacher and their peers, there will be assignments and things for them to do and learning activities for them to do outside of this time. Um, it is not our intention to have our youngest learners on their computers for the entire day. Um, I am working with our teachers right now to develop, um, finish developing their plans and um, laying out how much time they should be engaging in certain activities. Just like if they were in person, they wouldn't have their kids all sitting at their desks for a half an hour without taking a break. Um, so we're going to be doing those same things virtually as well. Um, for our elementary students in grades three through five, again, they're going to participate in four days of virtual live instruction. And then on Wednesdays, they will engage, it, that will be a day again for um, their positivity project and um, those types of lessons that they've already been um, working on with their teachers. Um, they will, um, their weekly schedule will include just like our pre-K um, through second grade students, daily live social emotional learning lessons, um, daily teacher led live small or whole group sessions, pre-recorded -pre teacher sessions for all students. Again, if your child receives related services, those may be live or pre-recorded and um, they will also receive that virtual learning schedule link. Um, in the afternoon, um, we may have, um, 
and, and this could go for any student pre-K through five, based on what they need. They may ask to meet with your child in a smaller group or one-on-one -on -one so that they can get some support in different areas. Um, they will have um, access to um, different content area videos and things like that. But we really want to make sure that parents and students feel like they're supported. So they have office hours. We will let you know when those are available, when you can reach out, when you can ask for help or connect with the teacher individually. Um, we also, again, um, want to keep our routines for our kids um, like they have been at school. So that whole group um, morning meeting really is a time for teachers to take attendance, um, you know, do the pledge, connect, do some sort of a, you know, a fun, um, you know, greeting with one another and then um, move into the learning for the day. And it may just be, re you know, them reviewing what the expectations are for the day and reminding kids when they're going to be getting on for different small group things. Again, um, we do not envision our kids um, sitting on a computer for hours on end to make this virtual learning happen. Um, they most likely will, you know, give like a, a lesson and then, okay, now go try this and then we'll meet back at this time. Um, so there will be flexibility within that. For our middle school and high school students, I'm going to just talk about our middle school um, students first. They are going to follow their current schedules virtually. So their current um, course schedule, you know, periods one through seven, they're going to follow virtually. Um, and it's really important that students get on in a timely manner. Um, that they, and that we do have five minutes built in between those um, each period. So students should have plenty of time to log out of one teacher's classroom and log into another. Um, some teachers may move from using WebEx primarily to Google Class or Google Meets, excuse me, um, just because they find that platform um, to work better for the, for them. Um, but they may use that. They're they're really this one and the same. So um, you know, students just need to know what their teachers are, um, what platform their teachers are using to deliver their live instruction, um, which will be clearly communicated to all of you again at the beginning of the week. One of the things that we um, learned in the springtime was how important it is to have the parents know what their child's schedule is at the beginning of the week and um, have one consistent time when things are going to be loaded um, for assignments to Google Classroom. So what we've asked our teachers to do is to make sure that um, that either they choose to post assignments for the day to Google Classroom at 8 a.m. They can schedule that each day or they're posted at the beginning of the class period when they would meet. Um, they won't be, um, so students can expect consistent times of when they are going to receive assignments and things that they need to do from their teachers. And they won't, you know, you know get, have that feeling of getting something done just to log in later and then see another assignment pop up. We're gonna eliminate that this, um, this um, fall if we have to move to a virtual um, program. Um, it is really important that kids sign on at their um, scheduled times. If they're more than 10 minutes late, they will be considered absent. I still will be um, enforcing our attendance policies that we have here. So if kids are missing um, more than, um, I think it's 13 days for our half, our half a year um, every other day classes. And if they're more than 27 days for our full, classes, they will have to make up those course time, um, that course seat time with their teachers uh, in order to receive credit for the class. Um, all students' daily schedules will be in school tools, and I know it's been a challenge this fall having kids not have access to school tools. We are in the process of, of um, having all students, they had, they had to go on to a desktop machine here it, while they were present in school and reset all of their Windows passwords so that they could gain access to school to tool. So that process is happening right now and should be finished for all students by the end of the day on Thursday. So students will have access to their um, school tools and their grades after um, on Thursday. So uh, just I'm just going to quickly go over some of our student expectations. Again, daily attendance will be taken. If a teacher says that your child needs to be on at a particular time, they need to be on at a particular time, they need to sign on for those virtual classes and um, group meetings. They are expected to be present and engaged. 
Um, if it's on a Google Classroom day on Wednesday, it's a, the expectation is that they will engage in the assigned work and this will be audited by the teacher and recorded for attendance purposes on that day. Um, all students in grades 5 through 12 should check their email daily for communication from their teachers and staff. All students will check their Google Classroom for learning activities assigned by teachers. So that's again, grades five through 12. In grades K through four, you'll wanna check the Seesaw learning platform parents for your students to see their learning activities that have been assigned as well. Students are expected to participate, to participate in those learning activities. Um, you also, um, students need to know when their teachers are available for support. You can feel free to email teachers any questions, but um, please allow at least a 24 hour window to occur for them to get back to you, which really means the end of the next school day. Students are expected to complete and submit assignments by the assigned due date. And we are expecting our students to still produce and submit high quality original work, just like they would here if they were in person in, in, and um, engaging person instruction. Our, um, Academic integrity um, policy will still be in place. So if students um, are plagiarizing or not um, submitting original pieces of work, we will still be enforcing that. I will still be investigating those things. Um, we also ask that students um, complete all assessments to the best of their ability, that they understand that our code of conduct still remains in effect and that they understand the virtual code of conduct, which we have linked to on um, this page remains in, a, in effect. Um, and for our student virtual live session expect, expectations, students, uh, we've changed these a little bit from the spring be, just based on what we've learned. So we want to be really clear about what it is that we're expecting our students to do. They need to log in on time. They need to be in a seated position and ready to learn. They need to have any distractions eliminated, which includes phones, toys, TV, and other people. This is their learning. So um, I know parents, we want to support our kids and help them be successful, but this really is a time for them to engage with their teachers. And um, if you have a question, feel free to email or set up a time to meet with that teacher individually. Students need to come prepared with the materials that they've been asked to bring. We ask that students do not eat during virtual class. It is distracting to others. We also ask that, the, that they mute their audio when they're not speaking and that they need to have their camera on and adjust the screen so that their face is visible the entire time unless there's an extenuating circumstance and that needs to be communicated clearly with the teacher in advance. It can't be something um, where they're shutting their camera off and on throughout the um, class. If students have a question, we would like them to ask for clarification. Um, talk one at a time and be an effective listener. Follow the teacher's procedures for asking questions. It may vary teacher to teacher. There are some different features within WebEx um, that allow students to raise their hand in certain things um, within each of those um, computer systems. So sure that they're following those expectations. We ask that you only post appropriate comments and questions in the chat boxes or on Google Classroom. Um, use respectful language and appropriate behavior at all times. And if there's a connection issue, they need to let the teacher know as soon as possible at the start of class, and they need to participate in only assigned sessions. So what that means is um, students need to just attend the classes that they have on their schedule. Parents, we would just like to ask right, you take, if you, you oh, yeah, that's right. I'll take over this section. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, one of the one of the really great things about um, having this time to prepare is to ensure that we're all on the same page to ensure to make to make certain that this is successful if we have to go in this direction. So making sure that every stakeholder group understands um, what's needed of them to make this work is so important. So we wanted to list for parents and teachers and administrators and counselors and so on. What is what are the expectations from them in order to support our kids in the virtual learning environment as best as possible? So we're going to start with our parent expectations. You know, we, we need parents to help their children um, log into Seesaw or Google Meet, Google Classroom or WebEx. Um, again, the, the kids should be trained to do so, but if they need some support from home, 
And we would love parents to be able to help with that. So parents will do our best to train you as well if we have to get into that situation. Um, but we'd love that support. Complete a weekly check of Google Classroom uh, with students to ensure they are on track and completing the assignments. Um, I believe it also has a similar feature in Seesaw, Mrs. Horak, um, that parents can check to make sure that kids are on target. Uh, regularly monitor the student grades. Um, check out Parent Portal, Google Classroom. Um, identify a space for your student to complete the virtual learning work. Mrs. Horak mentioned the need to eliminate distractions. Kids may need some help trying to design the best space for them in their learning needs. Make sure that your student is following their schedule. If, if, if their schedule requires them to be on at nine o'clock to, to start uh, first period in homeroom in first period, make sure that they're there if they're having a hard time getting out of bed. Um, and then just in, help kids establish a daily routine. When, when they're here in person, it's easy for them to follow a routine because we put it in place. When they're at home, sometimes they fall into wanting to kind of adhere to their own routine, their home routine. We've got to kind of change that mindset if we have to go virtual. I'll remind students how to communicate effectively, ensure that the student checks their emails regularly, encourage students to do their uh, work independently, do not feel the need to correct all errors. Our teachers will be providing feedback to students and, and that is, that's what uh, the learning process is. Um, so it's, it's all about making mistakes and then learning from those mistakes and it's okay to allow your child to make some mistakes, I, I promise. And then reach out to, our, to the students' teachers with questions or concerns regarding your child's progress. Um, teachers, as Mrs. Horak said, will be available. Uh, they will mark. They will uh, share with you office hours, and you're encouraged to reach out if you need anything from them. Uh, go ahead and take over the teacher expectations, okay. and I'll. Uh... Yep. So um, our teachers are being required to use Seesaw for grades K through four, um, Google Classroom, um, and WebEx or Google Meet for. Um, you know, the rest of the grades as their virtual learning platforms for their classes. Teachers are required to connect live with students every day of the school week to check in and take attendance. And then after taking attendance, um, teachers may decide to work with the whole group, whole class, or they may break into smaller groups um, on an alternating basis. But your children will engage with their teachers every day. Um, teachers also are um, submitting virtual learning plans to Ms. Gaffney and myself for our approval. Um, we want to make sure that our students are engaged in activities on their platforms, which are aligned to our curriculum and include scope and sequence uh, to drive instruction and focus on the standards of learning. Uh, they are being encouraged to collaborate weekly. Uh, most of our teachers collaborate daily, but we um, are ensuring that they have this time to collaborate to ensure equitable student experience in learning, alignment of pacing, content, and assessment. We're encouraging teachers to create their own videos, use videos that they've found um, by their content area or grade level teams, and upload videos that are already created by a reputable source. Um, we are asking that our teachers view the the videos prior to posting so that they um, can ensure that they are safe um, for our students to, um, you know, to watch, but that they're also not copyrighted and that we're not violating any copyright laws. Uh, we are asking that our teachers ensure that students are aware of their support times and that they will be available for students to ask questions for reteaching or other support of um, at a time of their choosing on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and on Wednesdays. And teachers um, will be scheduling meetings by appointment if possible. They are expected to respond to teacher and student emails within 24 hours during school days. And at the beginning of each week, all teachers will provide that calendar of learning so that you can have um, an idea and an overview of what your child's learning is going to entail for the week. Um, like. And as far as, yeah, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say um, um, those teach those calendars, um, like I discussed earlier, um, will be posted either Sunday evening or by Monday at 8 a.m. All right. As far as teacher communication, you know, in the event that we have to shut down for a period of time, uh, teachers will be prepared to to send 
uh, a notification to parents um, regarding their um, regarding all the necessary information, um, pertinent information for a uh, virtual learning experience, including their email, how to access um, the resources they use in the classroom, attendance expectations, their expectations for learning, their support times and grading practices if they haven't already communicated those. Um, go ahead, Mrs. Horak, you can explain the special education teacher and department expectations. So so um, it is our hope that we can keep our special, our students that receive special education services in school and receiving in-person instruction um, as much as possible. But should we have to shift and transition to this virtual learning environment, um, your child's um, team is already working on developing a virtual learning plan for each of our students here. Um, we will still schedule and facilitate IEP and 504 review meetings. We will still meet all of the required deadlines for initial evaluations, reevaluations, and annual reviews, even though it may be done virtually. Um, we will continue to focus um, on your the key IEP goals and services um, so that students can access the curriculum in a, a virtual environment. We will still continue our progress monitoring um, and our special education staff will continue to collaborate and co-teach with our general education teachers um, and, you know, via that uh, virtual platform. They will provide individual or small group instruction um, via pre-recorded or live sessions for pull-out services. Uh, you can expect in the next um, few days to receive some information from your child's service providers about um, whether or not they intend to do the do those services, continue them if we had to move to a remote um, virtual learning environment, if they intend to work with your child individually or within a small group and ask your permission for that. So you can expect that to be coming home if um, via Parent Square if your child is a uh, child who receives any of those services. Um, we will continue to uh, provide those accommodations and modifications to assignments, activities, and assessments um, to the extent the extent possible within our learning um, virtual learning environment. Um, all students will, um, all teachers will have access to the IEP and 504 plan so that they can successfully support our students that have um, an IEP or a 504 plan. We will continue to assist our teachers in determining how we can provide, like I said, those accommodations within the virtual learning setting. And um, you can expect that your child's special education teachers or service providers will be reaching out directly to you if there's any change in student services as a result of this transition. Uh, we are trying to minimize the amount of change, um, but we do we will be reaching out to you and so we can communicate that clearly with you so everybody's on the same page. Okay, so I'm going to quickly review the counselor expectations and administrator expectations. Again, those uh, two uh, work groups are really important in ensuring the success of a uh, virtual learning program. So, uh, as you know, we have one counselor on site here, Mr. Taster, and he still will be working with Mrs. Horak and me and the teachers to connect with families to ensure student engagement. So if we have students who are not engaging, it might be Mr. Taster, Mrs. Horek, or me who calls the family to say, "Let's, what's going on? How can we help you? This needs to happen. Um, he will continue to have counseling meetings. He will support our students as they pursue their uh, uh, various colleges and scholarships. He will monitor college and career readiness. He will conduct reg regular graduation checks and so on. Um, and he also is the driving force behind our uh, Sources of Strength program, and he supports our Positivity Project. So he, on Wednesdays, as teachers are teaching lessons on these topics, Mr. Taster is often the one, uh, the person who is sharing ideas and, and information with teachers to give them the necessary resources to carry that, those two initiatives out. Um, and he uh, will be sure to communicate to the school community about how he can be accessed and his services can be accessed during any virtual learning model. And then, of course, um, as we know from this past spring, um, the administrators are very busy ensuring that we are um, supporting everyone and making this happen and happen successfully for our children. Um, and that comes down to communication, supporting teachers, supporting kids, supporting families, providing trainer training, monitor quality and consistency of our programs, 
uh, monitor the reporting of health or safety concerns, um, inappropriate behaviors, so on and so forth. Uh, we're going to be watching student attendance very carefully and we're going to be working closely um, in collaborating with parents to ensure that this remains on target, um, even if we have to go to a different type of a setting. And of course, we will very closely monitor our at risk students uh, health their mental health, educational progress or needs. And again, uh, we'll be in touch with and connecting with our families and our community based organizations to give as much support as possible. So, Mrs. Horak will cover technology and then I'll end with food service. So, uh, as you. Um, no, our students in grades 6 through 12 and um, some of our students in the elementary, our fourth grade and our first grade have had um, devices already um, given to them. Mr. Bice and I are working on three different plans because we still are waiting for our Chromebooks that we purchased back at the end of August. Um, they still have not been delivered. So what that's going to mean is um, in the next day or two, you're going to receive a parent square um, survey from me that simply asks if you have devices at home for all of your students um, to use. And if you do and would not need a Chromebook, um, then we would have those Chromebooks returned to school in the event of a transition to a, a lengthy virtual learning uh, plan. Um, we are, we do have devices now that we are getting to each the fifth grade level, the third grade level and second grade level um, so that they can start practicing and keep, um, you know, practicing how to log in and to and see the various programs that they will need. But teachers are also creating uh, login and information sheets about all of that for you as well. If um, you do not have high speed Internet at home, um, please let us know as soon as possible. If this is an issue, we can um, provide hotspots, but um, we just we only have a limited number of those and we would need to know if we need to uh, purchase more of those. And there is a section on the family connection website, which provides training documents for parents. Um, and um, it provides documents for um, parents, teachers and students. And uh, Mr. Bice and myself will be available in the event of a, a move to a virtual learning a remote virtual learning plan that will be available daily to answer um, questions and any concerns that you may have. Um, just recognize that uh, when we, if in the event that we have to go to a fully virtual learning plan, um, there probably are gonna be some connectivity issues. Uh, internet speeds may be slower. Um, so those things we don't really have any control over, but uh, we can definitely um, talk to you and see what's going on and help you work through those things. And then lastly, our food service program. So if we have to shut down for a day or we have to shut down for a few weeks or more, we plan to still administer our food service program. We will continue to offer free breakfast and lunches. Um, that uh, free breakfast and, and lunch program has been extended through the rest of the school year. So that's really good news. Um, but families will have to sign up um, and meals may be delivered. We're working out those details right now um, or will be available for pickup. That's always going to be an option. Um, I, we're hoping to make delivery possible, but there's some some other um, quirks we have to work out right now to ensure that that is still a viable option. Um, and Mrs. Granchi, our food service director, will be sharing information directly with families should we need uh, to move into the virtual platform. And it will be posted on our website and she will share with you the step-by-step -step, uh, process of signing up and how you get your meals. And I strongly encourage you to sign up for the program. Um, it's it's free, it's free meals and uh, we want to make sure that uh, families don't have to assume this, uh, the, the burden of having to feed uh, their kids every single day um, uh, that they would otherwise be in school. So take advantage of it. Um, and if anyone has any questions about any aspect of what we've covered today, the virtual learning plans, um, Mrs. Horak is the learning plans coordinator. Uh, you can reach her at any time. Um, I'll let uh, Mrs. Horak wrap it up. And uh, I want to thank you very much for your continued support, everybody. Go ahead, Mrs. Horak. Um, so all of the information that we just went over again is located um, under the virtual learning tab of the reopening information center. It is our hope that 
Uh, we overly communicate and have um, given you as much information as we can about our virtual learning plans moving forward. Um, one thing we did not mention um, is that in, in the spring we made um, we made links that you could have access to teachers, their schedules. We will do that again for our elementary teachers. We won't need to do that this year for our middle school and high school students because they are just simply following their schedule that they would follow here um, in school. And please, if you have any questions or concerns about anything at any point, please feel free to reach out um, to me uh, via email, parent square, or just give me a call. We will still be here working in the building unless we are told otherwise. So um, again, I hope it doesn't have to come to this, but we are prepared in the event to make that transition to our virtual learning plan. Um, well, and um, stay safe. All right. I'm going to stop sharing my screen okay. and I'm going to stop recording now.